One of the most notable changes in 1.1 was the fixes to collision attacks most noticeable on chariots has made the bear chariots completely absolutely broken but what about the slanesh chariots which it was sort of intended to fix as they were somewhat useless before i'm happy to report that they are better but they're still not amazing they're pretty decent but do require quite a bit of micro to use effectively mostly because they're so so squishy and in comparison to uh, war sleds they are still just absolutely garbage but uh, that's not to say they're completely useless. We will see them in this battle today sent in from Koops. He's got uh, Slanesh here, Exalted Keeper of Secrets, Lore of Slanesh, a couple of Exalted Demonettes, a couple of Hell Scourges, Heart Seekers, and Hell Striders. So relatively elite in this starting army. Two Exalted Demonettes in particular can get a lot of damage out against Corn, but they can also take a lot of damage very quickly. Two Cultists, two more Demonettes in Reserve, some more Hell Scourges, the two Hell Flare Chariots. So this is the uh, upper tier, more expensive one. If you want a hilarious look, just check these stats in comparison to the, uh, even the light war sleds, to be honest. Pretty hilarious. Anyway, Hellstriders, Seekers. Uh, for this Corn army here, I definitely have some questions, but there are some pretty strong elements here. Scarbrand's amazing in this matchup, as he just can wail on everything. Cultists are always good. Exalted Bloodletters are okay, I think. Generally, it's better to go cheaper and wider with a lot of high damage. Cheap units like these Flesh Hounds. Uh, dual Hand Weapon Warriors I'm a big fan of, but probably want to bring some spawn as well to help give you some mass. And these the Minotaurs and the Bloodthirster also don't do a ton for you here. Um, yeah, it's just better to have the mass of the spawn and like spawn do plenty of damage for the cost. Um, given that Slanesh doesn't have any armored units, really, you don't need that anti-armor anti-large right of the bloodthirster and the minotaurs so it's just a little bit of overkill but anyway let's see how it goes here there is some mass of course scarbrand and the flesh hounds initially to stop up the chariots not that there are any chariots even in the starting army but the great thing about slanesh is they're so so fast a lot of units uh, above you know 190 to 100 speed they can get in the fight very very quickly with pretty much whatever they summon in so love this color scheme black Exalted Keeper of Secrets here. Looking very, very classy. Oh, yeah. That black and purple color scheme definitely looking fantastic. Now, the uh, Hellstriders, Heartseeker is going to push forward. Heartseekers can be very good in this matchup. They can also take a lot of damage very quickly, so they'll have to be careful staying away from some of those high damage targets. Even, like, as long as they can get a side or rear charge, they will wreck even, like, Exalted... Uh, blood letters, but they definitely don't want to be countercharged by the exalted blood letters. Anyway, uh, the collision, the changes to collision attacks didn't benefit Slanesh cavalry a ton. So the specifics of it, you guys who read the patch notes would know. But basically, there was a bug in the mass calculation where a unit, when a unit was attacking on the charge, its mass um, would be the same as the unit it was attacking. So basically, like the attacker's mass would be equal to the defender's mass. And because mass is an important component of collision damage, um, it's in fact, I think it's one of the main components of collision damage, uh, it basically charges did almost no damage um, when when formed by units with higher mass, like cavalry and chariots. Now these heart seekers, hell striders, don't have a lot of mass, so you won't notice a hugely um, a massive change on them on the charge. They were already pretty decent before because a lot of their damage uh, came from their just straight up high charge bonus and weapon strength rather than actually getting impact damage or collision damage the chariots on the other hand almost entirely rely on collision damage to deal uh anything so they're gonna start to come through anytime they get a rear charge especially they will do quite a bit of damage but considering the cost so far they haven't really done a ton yeah only 123 damage value and already a lot of the Slanesh infantry is getting routed here. These Hellscourge Marauders getting ground pounded. But no one's surprised. Uh, Scarbrand came in here and took a ton of damage, though. Wow, I'm very surprised that he is uh, somehow going to be kicking the can here. Is he really just going to straight up disintegrate? That is absolutely devastating uh, to lose Scarbrand so early on. And him just getting surrounded by those Heart Seekers, I would imagine. Yeah, they got like a thousand damage value. Probably the uh, Demonettes got quite a bit of value there as well. Vaulted Keeper of Secrets, almost uh, 2,000 value as well. So, interesting, as I was kind of ruminating about the Chariots, Scarbrand just gets absolutely wrecked, which is obviously huge. That's going to be 
a main uh, sort of component in this battle, right? Uh, that being said, Slanesh has already lost a lot too. Like the Heart Seekers are actually going down. Elstriders are going down. The Exalted Keeper of Secrets is basically done for at this point. So it's definitely been a bloody trade back and forth. We're going to see uh, slicing shards get dropped here. Unfortunately, the Hell Flayers right now, most of the infantry they have to fight is Halberds. So they're going to be struggling to make consistent contact. But yeah, so far, not the best in terms of value, especially with the Flesh Hounds hanging around. The Flesh Hounds are a great counter for the Slanesh Chariots because they're magic, high weapon damage. It's just like a direct counter, right? But the Slanesh Chariots... If they can get good rear charges, they certainly will do quite a bit. Heartseekers coming back up and around after taking horrendous damage. They're going to rinse in and out. Let the chariots come do their work. Oof, beautiful charge animation there. As the uh, Elflayer chariots manage to actually rout in tandem with the uh, demonettes there. So regular demonettes actually doing pretty good so far. Exalted demonettes also managed to salvage themselves. Uh, the center engagement definitely went... Fairly well for Slanesh. I mean, it was quite a bloody engagement, don't get me wrong. But uh, right now, objectives are mostly being contested. This one has been captured by Korn, but the others are sort of actively being captured by Slanesh right now. Or at least they're attempting to. They would have to clear out all of these Korn units first, which can take some time. But uh, the chariots back to them. Ultra wide, massive hitboxes is another issue for this specific uh, variant. But you can see one model does go down there, taking them down to only three models. And in terms of victory tickets, Slanesh hasn't really been able to capitalize a ton yet on their gold damage value lead, which really is is pretty substantial. Unfortunately, we don't get to see it in replays like you do in a live game. But I would imagine it's probably I'm not sure. Coops can let us know down in the comments below right around this time, but. Probably 2,000 points, maybe less. It Probably less, to be honest, but... Yeah, it's definitely looking pretty, pretty rough for Korn. That being said, how much of this is due to the Hell Flayers? How much is, of it is due to the other units in the army? That much remains to be seen. Certainly, the Hell Flayers do look very cool, and they are doing better. Even against these uh, summoned blood letters here right now, the Korn player... I guess just banking his resources, trying to get enough uh, to summon back in Scarbrand, I believe. Let's see, Exalted Keeper. Very low at this point. Would have a tough time taking down Scarbrand, but let's see. Fast forward a little bit as Korn brings out the big boy. Chariots come in and just wreck those uh, dual hand weapon warriors. But the problem with saving up with a big expensive, or a big expensive character like this is you bring him in, now he's completely unsupported against all of this Slanesh stuff, right? He's going to maneuver over on over to this flank here. Try and recap this objective. He's still got the Halberd also kind of holding out over on the far side here. Those Demonettes could definitely run over there and take a chunk out of that. But instead, it's just the Hell Scourges and the Chariots for the time being. Chariots going for a wide wheel, coming back around. Let's get, keep the health bars up so we can kind of judge the charge damage a little bit on a very clean pocket rear charge. Uh, let's see. I mean, the impact certainly looks great. Really is oh, just okay, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's nothing completely to write home about, but... We will continue to fast forward probably a little bit as it's fairly one-sided at this point. I mean, saving up to get Scarbrand is definitely... Uh, not advisable in this situation because again you just end up getting too far behind on units and on army uh, scarbrand anyway when he gets surrounded all those units will be getting their devastating flanker while they still have their charge bonus active right when they get the surround charge so like heart seekers seekers are going to generate a crap ton of value in a, <laughs> in a surround around a big character like scarbrand going to be very very nasty but uh, does manage to get some other troops in here, some Flesh Hounds. Uh, we got some Chaos Furies of Corn, more Halberds trying to maneuver over into the center. But it looks like a pretty decisive victory for Koops. The uh, Exalted Keeper Secrets goes down, but Scarbrand also does for a second time. Corn starting to make a little bit of a push here, but I mean, Koops still has plenty of units on the field. Demonettes, Exalted Demonettes all run over. Their fast speed, the Hell Scourge uh, Marauders there. Hellscourge mounted marauders even. Chariots, even in a battle where they have had basically full battlefield domination the whole time, though, have still not even come close to, like, half paying for themselves. And this is my biggest issue. Uh, one thing, and we'll compare them to 
war sleds in just a minute here. But just in general, I mean, these guys, yes, the with the devastating flanker, with like an ideal side or rear charge, they can do pretty good damage. But in most practical situations in multiplayer, the micro tax required to make good use of them is often not worth it when you could get just as good a value from your cavalry um, without having to micro quite as aggressively or at least having, uh, I don't know, a little bit more flexibility, right? In terms of being able to fight big single entities or higher mass units, whereas chariots are really only good against infantry. So uh, maybe they'll, it's also a symptom of like corn nurgle are arguably not great matchups for chariots anyway really when i think about the game three factions like maybe zinch but then again these chariots are so flimsy that they're just going to get instant blasted by zinch maybe cathay is probably the best bet just for pure disruption and also do some armor piercing anti-infantry damage since cathay does rely quite a bit on their missile infantry but again there's just it seems like there's more efficient options We'll look at that in just a minute here but in terms of the actual army damage value exalted keeper secrets performs super well with support of those elite slanesh units able to beat down scarbrand twice scarbrand himself almost pays for himself um twice i mean he pays for himself at least once pretty efficiently but man those heart seekers were really what did the damage in terms of the chariots here i mean pretty meh to be honest and considering this is even the upper tier chariot and again and they had basically battlefield domination the whole time to run shop with impunity on armored infantry granted it is halberd infantry in a lot of cases but even still i just I'm very underwhelmed by their performance even after the update so hopefully they'll get some more balanced tweaks and i think one thing would be to nerf war sleds so that the slanesh chariots look better in comparison and another thing would probably be to just straight up buff the Slanesh Chariots a little bit. Maybe give them like a plus 5 or 10 charge bonus, which would obviously then be doubled in the side or rear. But it just seems like really not doing a whole lot. So let's have a quick comparison here with the Chariots currently that we have access to. Slanesh and Kislev being the main ones, of course. Gore Beast is also sort of in this discussion a little bit. But uh, you've got the 800 Secret Chariots. And then the ones we saw there were the 1200 Player Chariots. 1500 exalted secret chariot i'm going to sort of step aside uh sidestep for now because it's a single entity chariot has a little bit of different considerations um than these sort of unit level chariots right or multi-model chariots rather but anyway so we're looking at cost here 1200 on the on the secret chariot puts it on par with like kind of in between these light war sleds but look at the difference in stats here Light War Sleds, significantly more HP, maybe not as much more HP as you might think, but more armor. They're not that much slower. 25, 75 speed for a, like, War Wagon, basically, is pretty insane. They have literally the exact same sustained combat stats, but for whatever reason, they've decided that the white Light War Sleds need more than double weapon strength of any other chariots that are currently in the game. Even the Gore Beast only has 50 weapon strength at the end of the day, right? So... Um, that's one thing is maybe just increase the weapon strength of these other chariots like up to 70s range i'm not really sure uh and keep in mind as well of course that while their melee stats are very similar light war sleds have an additional armor piercing 120 range or sorry 140 range shooting attack with a huge amount of ammunition which means they're just straight up better for being less cost oh and they could become un unbreakable which kind of evens out the fact that these uh, secret chariots are or uh exalted sorry health layers are demonic but uh yeah then you look at the secret chariots in comparison secret chariots can be pretty cost effective but again you're losing out on even more hp uh they are very squishy in the micro tax required especially because at only 100 you're probably pretty likely to go wide with these guys um it's just a lot of micro to use them effectively. And when Slanesh demands micro all over the battlefield, especially in Domination, when you're having to make decisions about summoning units, while also kind of micro in the battle, right? You have those macro and micro decisions to be making. Just seems like it's not worth it. I don't know. Let me know again what you guys think in the comments down below. I think generally nerf war sleds and maybe buff the other chariots in the game just a little bit again just to see if that would really help them start performing as intended. But for the time being, 
I would say if you want armor piercing, anti-infantry damage, you're better off to just go with, you know, like uh, Seekers and Heart Seekers. Guys, like I said, more versatility, taking down single entities, large targets, whatever else. So just some food for thought. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Uh, if you, yeah, every time I upload a video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. See you next time.